45 years ago, a Soviet woman climbers were pinned on top of high mountain the USSR in the worst storm in 30 years. It was June 1974, and 170 climbers from a number of countries occupied a huge mountaineering camp in the southern part of the Soviet Union, on the border of what is now Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Many would climb or attempt the peak Lenin. While not considered steep or technical, it's high and subject to severe weather. 19 Americans, including two women, attended as part of the 1974 American expedition. No one could ever have imagined how many things would go wrong that summer. The story of one of the greatest disasters in the Hall of Montanary has been almost completely lost. Lenin Peak is considered one of the less technical 7,000 meters peaks in the world to climb, and it is by far the most ascent of any 7,000 or higher peak on Earth, with every year seeing hundreds of mountaineers make their way to the summit. While the mountain is not considered steep or technical, it is big and high and beset by challenging weather conditions, with sections of moderately steep ice. Until 1974, no Americans ever had the opportunity to climb the imposing peak Lenin, even many non-climbers know of Everest, yet almost no one today has ever heard about what befell eight Russian women in 1974. And the Russian women sang songs together, and not infrequently it would hear their chattering and their laughter across the valley. Elvira Shataeva and the Russian women made final preparations for peak Lenin climb. The 30th of July, and the Russian women's team left base camp for Camp 1. Next day the team proceeded toward the summit without any problems. On the 3rd of August, Shataeva called a rest day. An American team of climbers behind the Russian women reported, Cloudy weather today and we have route finding problems getting over to Camp 3 in White Oak conditions. The 4th of August, a major storm was forecast, and organizers recommended all climbers descend, and the Russian women were seen walking in a line below the summit. The next day, and the Russian women's team radioed from the summit, on the 6th of August, the women tried to descend but only managed a few hundred feet. Speaking to base then and the 7th of August, they reported their struggles. Their final transmission came through at 20.30, and then, only silence and wind. On the morning of the 5th of August, a Soviet climber came to women's tent at Camp 3, the top camp, with a message from Bliss saying, a storm is predicted. Do not try to climb. Still, the air remained calm and fairly clear, people had come a long way and were in position, and some chose to try. The Soviet women's team summited late afternoon on the 5th of August. At 5 p.m. they radioed base camp and said that in the deteriorating visibility they were having difficulty making out the descent and had set up their tents to wait for a break. That night the American group wore their boots and all clothing to bed in case their tent shredded. The Americans had nylon tents with zippers and aluminum poles, they would outlast the storm. The Soviet women had cotton tents with toggle closures and wooden poles, and the wind wrecked two tents the first night. The morning of the 6th of August, Climbers gathered to hear radio transmissions by translator as Shataeva radioed reports of the worsening wind. Shataeva reported that one woman had become ill and another seemed unwell. A Balakov, the head team, told them to descend. A Balakov spoke slowly and adamantly, saying to reach snow in which they could dig caves. As their women descended, Irina died apparently freezing to death holding a safety rope for others, unable to dig caves in the hard, granular snow,
the women somehow managed to put up two tents on a ridge only several hundred feet below the top. The ailing climbers deteriorated. A Balakov strongly directed continued descent by those who could move. The day, the ill women died, also that day in the early hours after midnight, hurricane force winds hit, exploding the tents and blowing away rucksacks, stoves and mittens. Five women huddled in a tent without poles, with the three sleeping bags. The next morning, some Japanese climbers, heard the transmissions in Russian. The climbers bravely set out to help but forced back. Other climbers on the mountain mobilized, but all were far lower. Around 17 transmission unclear, but another woman seemed to have died, three remained. Winds up high were estimated at 100 miles per hour, the summit temperatures is minus 40. Another has died, we cannot go through another night. I do not have the strength to hold down the transmitter button, said the Russian climber Shataeva. Around 23rd, now we are too, and now we will all die, we are very sorry, we tried but we could not. Please forgive us, we love you. On the 8th of August, the storm was over. From their final camp, located about 400 meters below the summit, the American team set out for the summit with no idea of the events that had occurred above. Our summit day was so hard I couldn't believe it, an American climber said, it was a really humbling experience. The American trio, unprepared, saw the first body on the face below the summit, they recognized Chateau Eva, signs of others were visible upslope, the four Japanese arrived at the same time, and the Americans borrowed their radio to call a base, finding the other bodies above, they walked crying among them. Beyond Chateau Eva, two women were half buried in the snow, three sprawled across a torn tent, and another was frozen holding a rope leading downhill. That night at camp all three Americans were certain they heard women's voices. Russian voices. We'd opened the tent and no one was there, they said. Many observed that Chate Eva felt great responsibility for her team. The women were so very loyal to each other, they stayed together until the end. Had they reached the top one day earlier, they would have been lower when the storm hit. Nearly 200 climbers attempted to reach the summit of Peak Lenin during the summer of 1974. Half succeeded. 15 died in the region. Today, women have long proved themselves in climbing and mountaineering, are widely visible on the crags and in the peaks, and accepted as peers. The tale of the Russian women climbers is, one of the epic sad stories in modern climbing history.